Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about JavaScript and making calls to external APIs and, you know, working on our, our Giphy search um, project with JavaScript. Um, I, in the last video, we talked about using fetch and handling the promises returned from fetch. And I realized, like, you know, I feel like the description I gave you guys last time wasn't super great. And it's hard to, it's it's a tough subject to follow. Um, we'll come back to this and maybe add some more information, right? But essentially, like, if you um, want to use fetch, you can always kind of set it up in this configuration. And you're, you're probably good for 90% of the things that you're going to do, okay? Um, fetch is going to take the path that you want to request something from there's actually another option here or another parameter which is a bunch of options right so you can also configure fetch for different situations like post requests or you can add other options onto the um the request that you're sending so so that's there but essentially you you, you have to have the path right you don't always have to have the option second um you always get a response first and then you need to tell fetch how you want to handle that response. And what's important is that you always return the promise here so you can call dot then off of that response. And then when the second one comes through, that's the actual data that you're loading. So that's what's important to understand here. And we can come back to promise and maybe we'll, I'll have a whole video about that. Um, but anyway, so here we go. And if there's any questions on this, please post them to the comments and we can discuss it there. Um, and I can find out where you're, where you're having questions, right? Um, so there's one other thing here that I left out. So when I talked about the promise, I said that um, a promise is in one of three states. It's pending, means none of this has happened. It's waiting, right? Or it's uh, resolved, and that means that we've handled it, right? So we get into this callback here, and then maybe we handle it by creating another promise, right? Um, and the third state is that the, prom that, the, that the promise was rejected. And when that happens, you get an error message, right? So that means maybe the server got an error because we tried to call, you know, an address here that was unavailable, right? So we can handle our error messages in this way. Um, on the end here, you can tack on a catch block, okay? So promise always has a catch block. Um, you only need one catch block, so I wouldn't insert a catch here right you know i wouldn't do dot catch here and then do dot then right you only need one catch block for all the promises and that's kind of like a feature of promise okay so um dot then for uh resolved promises right and you handle it with your callback or dot catch if there's an error and the catch here will happen if the first promise fails or if the second one fails. So if the first one fails, it skips all the way down to the catch. If the second one fails, it skips to the catch, okay? So catch works the same way as then works. You include a callback as a parameter and the callback function takes an error message, okay? And then you can handle that error message inside the catch block. And maybe we'll just handle our error by logging its message to the console. So this error right here is an object, and it has properties, just like the data returned from, um, from you know, uh, Giphy. Um, but one of the properties is called message, and that's like a, a text description of the problem, right? So we'll just add the catch block. So anytime you're using fetch, um, even if it's a little vague, like what's happening with the promise, you can always just set it up in this format. Fetch some path dot then handle your response here. And then you're always going to return the first response and call one of the, the messages here. And most of the time it's going to be dot JSON. And then you can add a dot then on the end. And then you can write a callback to handle the JSON that was returned from the response. And here is where you're going to actually get your data. And then you can always add a catch block to the end to um, log messages or handle errors that occur. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's uh, do a little bit more here, right? So we've got our 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 console log here, and we've got our JSON data. And if I look at it here in the console there, 
you can see that it's pretty complicated, right? It's got three properties. It's got data, meta, and pagination, okay? And if I open up data, you can see data is an array. It's got 25 items in it. And every one of those items has a whole list of stuff, okay? Including images. And inside images, it's an object with a whole bunch of properties, right? And so somehow we have to turn these into pictures on the screen, right? So how are we gonna do that, okay? Well, first of all, let's just take a look at the data and kind of drill down into it so we can imagine what our path is gonna be, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll try and just log the, the relevant piece that we want here in the console and then when we kind of see it working correctly or get the what we want you know the correct information into the console then we can actually write the code that will display the images so let's give that a try right so let's go over this again i'm going to close this up again here so we've got object data so that would be for us that would be json actually let's move this over like this and we can see them side by side uh, what do we got here? There we go, right? So we can kind of see these things side by side. So this JSON right here is the object. And then if we said dot data, we would get this array. And if we wanted the first item in here, we could put the square brackets and zero, and then we'd get this guy, right? And then if we said, uh, dot images we'd get this other object and it would have all of these properties in it right so let's give that a try right so let's keep our eye on the structure here and what we'll do is we'll say json dot data and then we'll do uh, dot um, what was that again um, oh yeah so that's an array so we got to go square brackets here and we'll get the first item and so that should be this object here. And then that object has all of these properties, right? And so really what I want is I want something inside images. So then we'd say dot images, right? And then we would get all of these images. And then we have to pick out one of the images that we want. So I'll open this up and then I'll decide which one to get, right? We'll talk more about the... Um, the uh, which image to choose um, later, but uh, I'm trying to grab that thing there, right? Oh, there we go, right? Okay, but if we look at these, essentially like Giphy kind of wants to give us images at a bunch of different sizes so you can use them at different way in, in different places on your website or in different ways. And, you know, they give us, um, you know, a downsized image with a height of 360, you know, a downsized large, that's height 360. So these are like kind of maybe the same image. They look like the same number of bytes, right? Uh, maybe if it was a bigger source image, it might break this down differently, right? It depends on what size image the user uploaded to the Giphy site originally, right? Um, that's my guess, right? They give us a still image. So if you didn't want an animated GIF, maybe you could use this still. And then they give us an image with a fixed height. So if the height is fixed, that means the width of the image might change, right? So we don't know what the width is, but the height's going to be 200, right? And then they give us a fixed height downsampled. Not sure what that is. Maybe that's like scaled down. Maybe if the image was really large, they make it smaller here. They give us fixed height small. So this one's height 200, but this one's only height 100. Right, so if we wanted a bunch of small icons, maybe this would be good. And again, these are all fixed height, so all of these are going to be, um, the widths are all going to be different, okay? So if we want to do the layout like they had on the, um, the Giphy site originally, let's actually go there. Right, we'll go to Giphy here. All of the images on their search page, like when you search, let's search for cats again, right? Um, these images, except for the one over here, um, these images all have the same width, but the height is different, right? So they're actually not using fixed height, they're using fixed width, 
okay? So these all have the same width, but the heights are different, okay? And then they give us looping, they give us original and some other stuff, right? Um, so how are we gonna work with this? Well, let's give it a try. So I put in JSON uh, data zero and dot images, and that should get me to the images. Let's give it a try and see what happens, right? So I'll refresh it, and now you can see I've got downsized large, and I just have the list of all the images without that extra stuff, okay? If you're trying this and you make a mistake, like if I did data dot images like this with the dot, then, um, you know, I'd get undefined, right? Something would be wrong. So you can always back up one. I could say json.data. And then now I have the array of objects and I can look in there and see like, oh, this is an array. You know, I, if I want to get the first item, you know, I do the square brackets like this. And now I've got the first one. And now maybe I want to get these images down here. So I see that this is, you know, images within this object. Images is the property. So I'll put dot images on the end like that, right? And now I've got my image, right? So let's pick one of the images. Maybe I'll use this um, fixed width. Not sure how wide that is. Let's see. Um, oh, width of 200, right? So that's pretty good. So let's get fixed width. Maybe I'll even just copy the name here and uh, images dot fixed width, right? and then I'll refresh it, and then there's my fixed width image with the width of 200, right? And then it gives me some URL, so I'm assuming like this URL is the URL for the picture, right? So um, so I think we're in pretty good s spot here, right? To, to move on, right? Um, let's do a little bit of work here. So remember, um, data images gives us the or actually data zero gives us a list of all of the of the first 25 um, hits off Giphy. So really what we want to do is we want to search through the 25 items here and then grab images.fixedwidth from each one of those, right? Let's try and um, do that. And maybe, you know, when I do fixed width, there's actually a URL property, right? So, uh, you know, I see URL here. So let's actually log the URL. Oh, there we go, right? And if I click on that, oh, there's the picture, right? So so that's actually kind of working. Um, let's try and log all of these URLs, and then we'll generate uh, a list of image tags and put those on our page, right? So let's do that. Let's see what we do here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, uh, let's do json.data. So remember, data is an array right cuz we that's where we put the bracket 0 and then we'll do with a we did for each in our last project so let's do for each here and for each image in our array um let's put image here cuz it'll be one of these guys right uh actually no let's put object here right cuz it's going to be one of the objects here and that object will have a images property so for each item in data, we'll look at the object that we find, and then what we'll do is we will console log object dot images dot fixed width. Okay? So hopefully that should that should list 25 URLs. Oh wait, I gotta do dot URL on the end. Whoa, that's so complicated, right? So um, there we go, right? So we'll, we'll log object.images.fixedwidth.url, okay? Let's give it a try. So let me go back to the browser here. Oh yeah, there we go. So that looks pretty good. Let's try and look at one, right? Um, yeah, there's a cat with someone's sock. Let's try this one right here. There's a cat running down the hall. Okay, great. Um, so that looks pretty good. So maybe we'll save it. I had kind of a long talk about this. So maybe we'll start in the next video and we'll actually print this to the screen. And you can give that a try on your own if you want. And then you, we can come back to the video and see how, how I did it. Okay. So thanks for watching.